Hey there crew, it's Mark from Mark Your Pages and I have the intense urge right now to rearrange my studio space again, but I'm not gonna do it because I've promised you the studio tour. No lie, it's been like almost a year at this point that I've been talking about doing this. So today we're gonna go ahead and do that. I will show you my desk space. We'll talk about how I'm organizing my stationery. I have zones, that's how I like to compartmentalize my space. So we'll talk about each of those and also share some of my favorite products that I organize my space with. Honestly, there's been a handful of things that have just made my whole space so much more enjoyable. I've got my hive keeps for all of my pens that are out. I've got my Sidio crates for all of the other things. We'll go into all of it, so I can't wait. So let's go ahead and start with the desk space first, and then we'll just kind of like do a little zoom all around here. Oh, and you're also going to get a very cool point of view look as well, because I've got this dorky phone holder that I just bought for myself that's gonna hold my phone. So uh, let's talk about the desk first. All right, so if you didn't know, my office and my studio is in my basement. I have my own little corner over here, which looks very different from everything else around the house. This is like my little area here and I love it so much. In this studio space, I work, so I have a full-time job and then everything else around me essentially is all for bullet journaling and stationery, YouTube, podcast, all of the good stuff. So over on the left-hand side of this space, this is where all of my full-time job work happens. So my work computer is here, I've got my double screen set up and everything else and I really enjoy this space. It might sound weird, but compartmentalizing my space like this has been very helpful. That way when I'm focusing on work, I'm here and anything else I need to do non-work related is over on this side over here, just how it works. When I had my older space, there was two different types of desks that were here, but none of them were able to hold on to any of these grips, so I had stands all over the place. But with this new desk, I've been able to put a lot of these grip stands on here, so I have one for my light. I have one right here that holds the microphone uh, anytime I'm doing any type of these videos. I'll show you the view right here, which is gonna be of the camera and where that sits while I'm filming, and then all the other lights and everything else around me here too. So that's cleared up a lot of space behind my desk, which my wife is very appreciative of. I also like that there's a lot less clutter back there and not literally five or six stands surrounding my desk. I'm a lefty, so my bullet journal and my pens always on the left-hand side as I'm going through over here. I also have one of these dry erase boards that I'll write things on real quick, especially if I don't wanna write it inside of my bullet journal. This area over here has been changing over time. As of right now, I have this really cool stationary holder from Baron Fig, and I have a handful of like my decorative tapes and some easy stamps and things like that. It also has some pen holders. I don't really use this as much since I have my other fountain pen and regular pen holder that I got over here. A big reason why I have some of this stationery over here is that it used to be behind me on my desk and I just never used it. And what I found is that by moving it in front of me, especially being like a more of a functional type space, I am using the items in there a lot more. I'll probably cycle through the things in here a little bit, including different stamps or other things that I like to use. Also finding what I'm not really using a lot either. As cool as these little deco tapes are, I don't really use them a lot in my journals, but by putting them right in front of my face, I'm hoping that maybe I'll use them more. All right, then over on the right hand side of my desk, this is where all the fun happens. So this is my personal computer and my personal space. This is also where I edit these videos, everything on my iMac over here, and then everything around here, as you can see, is in some way, shape or form purposeful. It's here to kind of help me out with what I'm doing. So if we look up top here, you're gonna see a big ring light, this big ring light, plus this smaller rectangular light. This is what I use for my top-down views whenever I'm doing my bullet journal videos or filming anything with my hands, essentially. This gives really nice light from both sides, so I'm not getting any kind of harsh shadows. The big light also helps really well when I'm doing these type of videos because it's my ring light and it's off to the side and I think it does a really good job there. As I mentioned before, I was able to get this off of a stand and onto one of these posts, so really excited about having these. It's made a really big difference. You'll see a lot of those uh, in this studio as we're going around things. Over on the right-hand side of my desk here, I have another one of these kind of functional modular stands. This right now is holding a lot of things, and this is a little bit causing like an issue right now. As you can see, I can't really easily get to the stationary that's behind there. That's one of the reasons that I want to do a little bit of a redesign of this space. But over here, I have uh, a mic that I'm using that plugs right into my phone if I'm doing things on my phone versus a camera. 
Up top here, I actually have the phone stand. This is what I clip my phone into when I'm doing my overhead shots for my YouTube videos and also for my shorts as well. And then I also just added my little podcast microphone holder back over here too. Since I just set up the Pals podcast with my friend Jess, which I'm so excited those episodes are already out now. Links down below for that one and a new YouTube channel, very exciting. But because we're doing that a lot more and I'm going to be a lot more consistent with this podcast than I was with the Hobbyist Hangout, I I wanted to have my materials and everything right here. So really everything in this area over here is all about video, recording, production, editing. That's a lot of what I do on here. Of course, I have personal emails and stuff like that too, but really this space is for creation. Like I mentioned, right behind all of the stuff, I have a shelf that I saved. My wife wanted to get rid of it and I was like, no, I can use it for my space. So I put it over here. But on top of here, I have my mild liner and other zebra collections. And I also just use this for like temporary staging. Like if I have inks or something that I want to review or that I'm gonna use for a video, I can put things up here and know that that's what that's for and then put them away when I'm done. Now down below that, this is where part of my stationary collection is, at least all of my pens. Now the pens that are over here, I'm about to kind of rethink the way that I'm organizing these here. So a lot of everything that's in here is organized by brand or by type of pen that it is. So you'll see a lot of things like all of these pens over here, all Faber-Castell fine liners. I use these all the time for my bullet journal setups. And then I have them organized by size and some by colors. Um, as we go through here, I have some of these that are just collections of like items so like all of my mechanical pencils go inside of this space here gel pens that I would use often go here flares other colors that I like a lot have been in here but honestly I'm not using everything that's inside of here my big thing really is just get items that I want to use more often right in front of me I'm very much the kind of person that needs to see the thing to know that I have it if it's in a drawer put away in a box I will totally forget about it so you'll see a lot of things that need to be labeled or they're clear or in this case out in the open versus in inside of a drawer. So that's why I have a lot of stuff out. That way I can look at it and be like, yep, I need that. Or, oh, I forgot that I have this and start to use it a little bit more. It seems silly, but that's how my brain works. Now the shelf below that is currently just a catch all that I have. I also need to figure out something better for this. So as of right now, this space is a lot for all the other types of journals that I'm using outside of my bullet journal. I have a notebook back here that's for all of my YouTube masterminds. I have one for a different type of class that I was taking. I have a five-year journal that I'm not really using, but I swear that I'm gonna start using it more. I say that all the time. Now, currently on top of my desk, I have my other two planners that I'm using, at least at this exact moment. The first is the January through June Night Owl Planner. I've been using this a little bit differently, mostly for anything that has to do with social media and planning. It stays over in this section. It does not creep over into my workspace. And then also right now, because I'm doing so much with the podcast, I dedicated another notebook to the podcast notes and episodes. So that's right on top of my desk right now that I'm thinking about it. But I need a place that I can exchange those out. So if I'm working on ideas for an Archer and Olive blog, I can pull out that notebook and just have it here for that. If I want to focus on the podcast, I can put that other notebook book away and pull this one out. It's like uh, I need another staging station essentially for like notebooks of things that I'm doing. So next to this over here is my art cart. I love this because it turns and I kind of have two different functions for each side of it. So this front side here has all of my small tools, all of my small rulers, scissors, things like that. Over on the left hand side at the top are bigger rulers and stencils and things. So that's all organized together. Behind that is kind of not random stationary. It's all by groups. Now in these little red buckets, I used to organize all of my stations stationary inside of these, but that was before I got the hive keeps that I have all of my other stuff out on now. So I really need to rethink this section right now, maybe put some of these pens in different places because it's not really functional, at least for the pens. All of the click art markers though, that's all functional. I love pulling those out and using those. And I think it's because I can see those, they're right there on the edge and it reminds me to grab them and use them. Now on the next shelf down, this is where all of my inks are. And again, organizing this by all the items I like to use together. So on the left are all of my ink blocks and ink pads. The center here are all of the acrylic blocks that I'm using for my clear stamps, which are organized separately. And then in the back here, I have a piece of plastic. Now I use this because I use these stamp squeegee deals. So the way that they work is you wet them and then you can wipe off your stamps with them and you just keep reusing them. But because those have to be wet and I'm sitting these things on my desk and I'm dealing with paper, I just have this out so that it's not getting anything else soaking wet while I'm using it. So it's a bit of like a protectant, but it's all right here together. 
Now below this, this is another area again that I need to re-go through. The left hand side is just extra stationary markers and pens and things like that that I'm just not using right now. These are things that I want to use or bring out. Um, honestly, it is a little bit of extra overflow storage, but it is what it is. But then on the right hand side, this is a functional space. So I started doing a lot more ink swatching inside of my bullet journals and videos and things like that. So all of my tools are here. So I've got my heat tool here for easy drying. I have my little swatch notebook that I'm using right now. I also have the cotton swabs. I can use those for different types of swatching, or I can use these other little tools that I have here. Now, like I said, my art card has two functions, so let's go ahead and give it a twirl. Honestly, the only function of the back of this art card is that this is where I keep my washi. And this is washi that I actually want to use. So I used to just keep it all on here, but by limiting my space of usable washi or designs and things that I like, I found that I'm tending to use these a bit more. They're a bit of mix of both like functional and like cool and decorative, but then also some that I just use whenever I'm using my Distress Oxide or stencils and just need to hold things down. So I actually just reorganized that whole washi thing not very long ago, so that's why it looks so nice and organized. Now I gotta get the rest of this in order. All right, let's go ahead and just turn our chair just a little bit more and you'll see my small staging area. This is a dual purpose area. The bottom half is for all of my stationary items and boxes and stuff that I need to go through, whether they're new purchases, new things that I'm getting from brands, um, things I need to review or make a video on or whatever that might be. And then the autumn in here is actually here for the dogs. So whenever they're down here with me just hanging out, they love to sit here, look out the window. They have a great view. They can see if those little squirrels are out there or not. And I like having them down here sometimes. Other times when I'm trying to film, they need to go upstairs because if they see a squirrel, they will like pounce on that window and scare the hell out of me, honestly, and just be too loud. And they jingle and that's not great for videos. All right, let's go ahead and talk about my pride and joy. This is my background. And this is also a functional space because this is where I have a lot of my other stationery out, all of my inks, and then all of my sub organization that happens underneath of this with the studio crates. So let's just go ahead and start the tour at the top. I have a bunch of like fun little like tchotchke things that I have out over here. I've got my golden snitch, which I just love the Harry Potter series so much. So gotta have that over here. I've got plenty of live plants. You're gonna see a lot of those on the background here, just trying to keep things alive in these windows. It's very cold here in the basement, so I'm happy that they're still alive these things will thrive anywhere especially down here now over here are all of my other stationary items so this for me is supposed to be a little bit more storage things that I'm not using as much but the thing is is that as time goes on some of them I use more than others, or sometimes I use this for backup. Like on the other space, I had a lot of my mild liners, and then over here, I have duplicates of colors that I've gotten over time. So it's not that I'm not using everything over here. Sometimes it's just overflow storage so I can see it. And it also looks nice for a background too with all the different colors. My real goal is to actually just rotate things out from behind me to in front of me or to my side. My goal here is really to use more of the stationery that I already have, and sometimes just seeing it right in front of me easier to grab, easier to use. So we'll see what happens when I redo this whole entire organization space in the future. So right now I have my knight and he is currently holding my Mark Twain pen from Cochrane. This is like my dream pen. I love it so much. I've wanted it forever and I have one and I haven't actually used it yet, but it is beautiful and it is being held up and looks wonderful with my pen holder knight here. One of my favorite things that I have here is actually my big octopus print that I have from my friend over at Jump Jack Studio. She's a local artist. I always see her at the festivals and things that I go to. And when I saw this print, I just had to have it. Now this also has a dual purpose. This is both here because it looks amazing, but it also hides a bunch of stuff behind it. So I had to figure out a way to kind of organize the overflow of like fountain pens and things. And I have them all inside of these beautiful cases, but I also have some other notebooks and things that I just didn't know what to do with. And also my sticker folder that also needs organization as well as back here and it's just a nice like storage space I know it's there it's only slightly hidden away by my big octopus but I just wanted to show you that I do have secret storage around here as we go through things okay are you ready for like my favorite part of the back of my wall here it's all of my stamps not all of them it's some of my stamps and my ink collection and I love the way that this looks 
So a number of years ago, Nicole from Plans That Blossom introduced me to Eric Small Things. She is a Japanese eraser stamp artist. I love her, I love her aesthetic, and I'm addicted to everything Eric Small Things. You'll see a lot of Eric Small Things as we go through my collections here. So this is actually a nail polish holder organizer that I use for all of my stamps and I love it so much. I have all of my block stamps out on this. They're a little bit harder to organize than the clear stamps, which we'll look at, but I like having them out to see them. It's kind of the same deal as before. I need to see it. I know that it's there. I can grab it. I can use it. I can put it away. So that's how this area really functions for me. Now, right below this, we start to get into the fountain pen space. This is where I have all of my glass dip pens. Instead of having just one or two of them out, I went ahead and organized all of them together in this holder that I got off of Amazon. This is my Eric Small Things box, which has some fun Eric Small Things stationery inside of it. It looks cool. It's functional. I just keep it all themed together. Makes sense for me. I also just recently got this organizer. So all of my calligraphy nibs and different size nibs that I have, I could organize and find them easier before they were just like a little plastic case. I also have ink samples back here. These all came from Goulet pens as well as this holder, which I am just addicted to. Uh, really excited to start to use these more. I, instead of just buying full bottles, which you'll see right over here that I have a lot of, I sometimes just like samples and it's just more fun and exciting. It's like, you know, a surprise. You don't know what's gonna be inside of a random sample box and that makes me happy. I also have a number of my nib holders out here just on display. So a lot of these are from Kakamori. Uh, we have Riverside Pen Company. This came from Amarillo Stationery, which is also where I got my paper holder over here that I love so much and have out all the time too. And just some other like pen holders and things kind of over here. And now we have the inks. I love this section. Someone said once that this is like a stationary store and they are not lying. This is very much like having my own little stationary store and I love it. So currently every single fountain pen ink that I own is currently on these shelves here. I've organized them mostly by brand, but what I'm finding is that some of the bottles don't necessarily fit into the same spaces. So over here on the right hand side, these are all those same nail polish holders that I was talking about that I had for my stamps. I use them for my inks as well. They're supposed to all have kind of the shelf holder on them where it goes into the shelf. The problem is not all of the inks fit. So I actually flip them upside down for just like a flat surface. So that's why things, some of them sit inside of it and some of them kind of sit on top of a shelf. I really do love organizing by brand. Um, so most of the time things will be organized that way. I think that the Ferris Well Press, like Fairy Tales collection, these little bottles are the best and I love them and I love having them out. We have a mix of where I'm putting the other Ferris Well Press bottles because those are really large and they do take up a lot of space. So some of them I have over here and then some I'm organizing right over here to the right. They actually fit in this holder a little bit better. I got this from like the dollar bin over at uh, Target one time. My wife was like, what do you need these for? And I was like, I don't know. I just need to put things inside of it. I'll, I'll find something. And I found something. Okay, so one of my biggest projects that I did last year is I went ahead and I organized all of my stationery, like stamps and stickers and papers and things like that. I used to have these mesh containers from the container store and they worked for a good amount of time, but things just started to get very heavy and it just, they weren't quite working out. And then Instagram showed me these ads for the Cityo crates and I was instantly in love. Compartmentalization, colors, labeling, all the things I got and I was very excited about it. So let's go ahead and talk through my studio crates and what I got inside. Because I can't organize all of my stuff in areas, like all of my camera gear, for instance, anything that I'm not actively using, I do put away just to kind of save my space a little bit. So in my first crate over here, I have a bunch of camera gear. I think that these studio crates are amazing. Like I said, you can get them in different configurations. You can get these dividers inside of here. So I've divided out these sections here for different pieces that I have and just storage. The next one is newer. I just got this not long ago, and this is just for paper. This is just leftover paper, paper I can grab real quick. There's no real rhyme or reason to this other than I didn't want to get rid of it, but it doesn't necessarily belong anywhere else. So everything like that goes in here. <laughs> 
And then the last one on the bottom here is all of my printmaking materials. So most of this is going to be linoleum or like the rubber erasers that I cut up and use. I also have some other printmaking materials inside of here, a handful of inks. I used to have this stuff all over the place in my older space, but when I decided to start going in this studio crate direction and knew I was doing this, I just said, okay, Mark, you are, you're putting everything in here. Let's make it all fit. And so far it's been doing pretty good. The other thing that I absolutely love about these crates, I probably should have talked about this first, is that they come with these dry erase labels that you can add on. You don't have to get them, but I, I had to get them. What I love about these is it kind of goes along with what I was saying before is that I have to see it to know that it's there. So having the labels on these crates at least lets me know what's inside of there. So if I come down and I'm randomly like, I wanna make a stamp, I can go right to my printmaking area. I know exactly what it is and get what I need versus trying to remember. It's just a nice little mental thing for me that really helps me with my space. Honestly, it's the best thing I could have ever done. All right, these next ones, This I'm, I'm most happy about this. This is actually why I got into the Studio Crates to begin with, and it was for my stamp collection. I actually have a video that I did here on the channel that talked about how I organized these stamps and at least got them to where they are, but I used to organize them a little bit differently. I'll drop that video down in the descriptions below for you if you're interested in seeing how I originally organized these, at least with all the labels and the dividers. But what was cool is that when I got this crate, I realized that they all fit inside of these crates like this, and I could further sub-compartmentalize my collection here. So I was already doing it by brand, then I started to do it by type or category, and now I have all of my collections on one side, all of my kind of free categories on the other, and there's enough space to actually put all of my stencils in here too. Too, which is great. And then on the far right is where I have my label maker and I have my little tapes and stuff like that. So like this whole space, again, self-contained inside of here and just working beautifully and I love it so, so much. The next category down is a lot of more of other like larger block stamps. This is mostly the bigger ones that I have because you saw the smaller ones up on top. Some of these things I actually should bring out of here, like these small stamps that I have here, like I want these out so I can see them more often and like use them more often. Cause I find that when they're in here, I really don't go to grab them. I have to be very mindful. Oh, I want that stamp, let me bring it out. That actually might be something good to put like on my desk space, like around where my workspace is, because that way I will use them in my planner. That's at least what I'm telling myself right now. I also have watercolors inside of here. These are like my specialty watercolors that I'm using. This isn't just kind of like your Crayola watercolor palettes. These are all my really nice ones. So I keep them all in here. And now below this is where I put other like paper, ephemera, like more niche types of paper, not like the other box that just holds whatever papers. This has a very specific reason inside of here. I also have stickers inside of this box and then all of my distressed oxide, my brushes, all sub compartmentalized and organized and I love it so much. The file drawer, that's just there because I have crap inside of it. It is not well organized. We will not be looking inside of there. There's nothing exciting in there at all. A bunch of crap, but I have some stickers on it. I needed space for stickers. It sits there, it takes up some space and uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that. And then over to the very far right here inside of my other studio crates, these I have stuff just for like around the studio, super glue and tape and some other materials like that. Extra office gear, just things that didn't fit inside of any other boxes or I don't want out, they go inside of here too. As a digital designer, working in UX, do video, I have a ton of external hard drives and other things like that that I just don't want out, but I don't want them necessarily away. So they all fit nicely inside of here. And if I ever need to grab them again, I know exactly where to go. And while everything for the most part is well organized, I have these two cabinets here that are like semi-organized, it's like organized chaos, just extra things that I don't wanna have out that didn't go inside of a box or a crate, they go here. And then all of like small little notebooks and stuff like that go down here at the bottom. Um, in case I ever wanna grab them, I know exactly where they are and we go from there. All right, and the next, we have to take a look at the bookcase with all the bullet journals on top of there. So many notebooks. This is actually a whole project that I went through recently, another video where I actually got rid of about half of my collection of notebooks, or at least took about half of them off of these shelves. I decided I only wanted to have notebooks up that I really wanted to see and that look really nice and that I'm using. So I went ahead and organized those. So again, that link will be down in the descriptions below if you're interested in checking that one out to talk about how I categorize them all. I have a whole air table for them. So the top row here, this is a lot of like specialty notebooks, small notebooks, the heirloom notebooks are all up here as well. 
I think they look really nice, especially with the fountain pen on the outside of the heirloom boxes. Oh, so beautiful. The next row down here is all notebooks that I'm currently using. A lot of these I'm using for ideations and like research and development, uh, sketchbooks and things like that all live down here. Notepads kind of in that space. So I really like it a lot. Next is down, these are mostly all used notebooks. So everything on the left-hand side are all of my bullet journals all the way up until the one that I just finished off. And then I have extra notepads that are over here on this side here. The top right, this is where I have just a lot of storage of art journal of notebooks, a lot of the Halloween collection that I love having out. Um, a lot of A5s are over here. So I also like to organize my stuff by size. So A5s mostly over top of here in all different collections. Next section down, we have some more sizes. We have our squares and we also have our B5 down here. And then everything down below here starts to get slower and slower into organized chaos. So the next section here are these bins that I have for my acrylographs, my coleographs, and for some extra washi that I'm not using as much of. So for the most part, I started off organizing them by collection. So we've got metallics, we've got like tropical collections, we've got primary and fall and all of that. I've organized all the smaller boxes from the sub boxes in this section here. So they're labeled, all kind of put together. The Amanda Rach Lee case I just have on top because obviously I wasn't gonna take them out of this case because it was so cool. And then a lot of the coleographs are organized up on this section just above these here because I don't have a space for them yet. You saw my washi tape collection of like usable washi tape before. Now, not everything in here is not usable. That's not what I mean by it, but these are just designs that I'm not using as much. A lot of them just really don't fit my overall aesthetic. They're floral or they're different kind of colors. I just don't put these types of things in my bullet journal. I like these drawers because I could somewhat organize them. So there really are like two tiers of washi tapes inside of here, different brands, different things. I've semi organized them a little bit, but not fully. So it, you know, it is just here. And then these bottom shelves, honestly, it's just a lot of like extras. <laughs> it's different notebooks and things like that that I didn't want up higher. Extra art journal of notebooks, some sketchbooks, cases, things like that. Just sit on this bottom shelf here and, and that's that. So that's the studio tour. I really appreciate you hanging out and checking that out today. I know we've been talking about it for a long time. I am really sorry that it's taken me this long to get it to you. But now that I've done this, I can go ahead and reorganize it. And then like, I can do this a few more months down the road and be like, here's what I changed about my space. Is it more functional? Is it not? I think more than anything right now, it's getting my production area in a better order and just working a little bit more fluidly. I'm reaching around stuff a lot with that corner cabinet and just really not working for the space, but you know, I'm, I'm gonna make it work. That's what I'm gonna do. For me, rethinking where I have a lot of these holders, again, while I'm glad that they're not on a stand in the middle of the floor, they're still kind of in the way. So I think reorganizing that, reshuffling that a little bit more will make it a lot better. And I'm just excited to get more usable stuff up in front of me. I don't wanna put everything on my desktop because I do like it to be somewhat clean and open, kind of as you saw, is mostly how it functions and then have like staging spaces for other things like I need a space over here for things I need to go through or I need to review or a temporary holding space for inks or things that I want to make videos with and more than anything I just want to really create a space that I can put these extra notebooks that I'm using for different ideas and just have them like at an arm's reach but not in the way that's what I got to figure out like how am I going to do that I don't really know but we will find out I'll share it with you when I get there I'm going to do my best to gather as many things as I can and link a lot of it down below it's not going to be like every pen and every marker but a lot of the storage or a lot of the holders or things that are really helping to make my space functional, I'll make sure to link all of that down for you below. But if you have specific questions about anything you saw that I'm not mentioning, just drop a comment and I will be happy to send you a link or add it to the description uh, if that would be helpful. One of the questions I get a lot is how did I organize all of my stamps, especially those clear stamps. So what I'm gonna do is pop that video right here for you so you can check it out. It's not the same storage option that I have here, but it is how I categorized or organized all of those clear stamps. So regardless of where you're putting it, that video will help you get there. I'll talk to you next time, friends. See ya.